Hi, I'm Andy, and in this video we're going to go from absolutely nothing installed on your computer to uh, unit tests running passing in Elm. So we'll start off by just installing uh, 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 um, Elm itself, so let's do that. So I'm assuming you're on Ubuntu. Uh, if you're not on Ubuntu, you're going to need to do something a bit like this. So app get install. Uh, uh, this is to get Node.js. This is the this is one way of installing Elm. It's the only way I've ever done. Do an app get install um, Node.js and npm. Um, and actually, I've already got them installed, so it didn't need to do anything. Then we do we use npm. Now we've got npm, which is the Node.js package manager, which is uh, what the, the way we're using to install Elm, even though it's not based on Node.js. Um, we do npm install minus g and we're doing it sudo so that because uh, it gets installed in a global location that's what the minus g means tell it to install elm uh, actually i've already got elm installed but it seems quite happy to install it again uh, so now we've got elm installed and now we're also going to install elm test because we're going to write a unit test for our elm so same command again but instead of elm elm test once we've got all that installed, we've got everything we need. So we're going to make ourselves a directory and write some Elm code. So I'm going to call my directory unit test, Elm unit test example. Uh, CD into it. And I'm going to run Elm package just to confirm I've got the right version of Elm installed and everything like that. So Elm package tells me 0.17.1, which is the version of Elm I was expecting. So um, to, uh, there's nothing in this directory, I've just made it. So to get Elm to set some stuff up for me, I'm going to do Elm package install. And what that does is it makes you um, a file called elmpackage.json. So let's have a look at that. So in this directory here, it's made, in fact, before we do that, let's just have a look. So what's been put in this directory is some stuff in Elm stuff, which is a, a directory that Elm uses that we can ignore. And then this file elmpackage.json. So let's have a look at elmpackage.json. Um, uh, so this is where you describe your project, say what version it is, um, where its source code repository is, and so on. All we're going to change in here for now is that our source code is going to go in a directory called src instead of just being in the current directory. We'll leave everything else the same. Our, the elm code we write today is not going to have any other dependencies, but if it did, this would be where we'd put them. So save that file come back out again um, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to ask elm test to set itself up with the stuff it needs so so if we type so we type elm test in it and uh, elm test will make uh, a, a test directory so another little what's going on here so now we've got um, a source directory and a test directory that were created for by that init command and inside the test directory let's have a look um, it's made as a main file and a test file. But first of all, let's have a look at elm package.json in there. So it's made as another elm package.json. That's because your tests don't have to live in the same repository as your, um, as your main code. In this case, they are. So it's made a little directory for us called tests. And it's made an elm package in there, which is for the dependencies of the test code rather than the normal code. So let's have a look at that. Um, uh, so again we're describing but here we were describing the test projects rather than the the main project and again it could have it it could have a different source code repository different license even the source directory is a right so basically the tests directory and it also looks for sources in the source directory that um we we saw it had created earlier which is where our sources are going to go uh and here are the dependencies of the test code you'll notice that it depends on a couple of other things that the other code didn't depend on elm test and no test runner um, uh, because the te our tests normally have some dependencies that the main code doesn't have. Whenever we have any dependencies in our main code, we need to copy them into here. Uh, it seems annoying. I kind of understand why. Um, as I get more familiar, maybe I'll understand better why it's necessary or possibly even a better way of doing it. But anyway, um, so what we're looking at here, the, the file we're looking at here is tests slash elm package.json, but I'm about to open up the original elm package.json. And if we look in there and look at its dependencies, it depends on Elm, the language itself, and it also depends on this HTML module. So I'm going to copy that and go back to the, the tests version of this file. 
and I'm going to paste in that HTML module. So now the tests depend on the same stuff as the main package. Uh, for the code we're writing, we probably didn't need to do that. But in general, um, you should always have all the dependencies you need um, for your test code in this file, as well as in your main uh, Elm package.json. So I'm just doing that for completeness. That's the only changes we're going to make in this file for now. Um, so now we've got We've done our Elm test in it. Um, we've got an Elm package.json and a test slash Elm package.json. So let's try running the tests. Um, that Elm test in it set up some tests for us. So let's run them. Um, the first time it runs, it goes and downloads the packages that are required and their dependencies. Uh, uh, and now I think it's running the tests, maybe. Uh, and the tests ran. Oh yeah, that, that was sorry. That was compiling all the modules. Then it ran the tests. The tests ran, and there there is uh, there are two tests that passed and one test that failed, and that's because those are the tests that it set up automatically for us. So let's have a look at what it set up for us. So let's have a look inside that tests directory again. So it made us. It's got an Elm stuff again that we ignore again, and it's got a main.elm and a test.elm. So let's have a quick look at main.elm. We're not going to change it. I just want to show you what's in there. So this is the program that actually gets run uh, when you run Elm test. And as you can see, all it really does is runs this, uh, is uses this tests.all um, to find your test. So we're not going to touch this file. We're going to go and have a look at that tests module that it made. Let's see what's in there. Maybe write our own tests. So um, this is what your unit tests are going to look like. You describe your test suites. Um, so I'm going to uh, change the description of that. And then we've got three tests in here. There's one test, and there's the next test, and there's the next test. So let's, um, uh, we're practicing test driven development here. So we're going to write our tests before we've written any real code, and then we'll make some real code that um, makes the test pass. So let's start by describing our test suite. Um, we're going to call it numbers are either odd or even, which may or may not be a good name for a test suite. I haven't decided really. Um, and then uh, we're actually only going to need two tests instead of the three that we've got here. So let's make one test first and call it uh, odd ones are not even. Um, and, and notice that you can have, you can write uh, tests using assertions like expect dot equal and that just checks that this thing is equal to that thing uh, uh, the first thing is equal to the second thing actually our, uh, the function we're testing just returns true or false so I'm actually going to use expect dot false instead and expect dot false uh, requires us to describe what we're, what we're making an assertion about because it's not going to be able to give us a very good error message otherwise when it fails um, so we're going to say Expect three to be even because the assertion we're making is that we get a false back from calling a function called is even three, which we're going to write. This is even function is the, the production code that we're going to write. Um, we haven't written it yet, but if we want to use it, we're going to have to import it. We haven't written this module yet. Um, I'm calling it can't even. It's a funny joke. Um, and uh, it's going to have a function in it called is even. It's the, we're going to write a module called can't even. It's going to have a function in it called is even. We haven't written this yet, but we're going to. Okay, so let's describe our second test. Uh, even ones are even. And you, uh, interestingly, you, you can find yourself repeating yourself with it, where, because the test has a name, but then our assertion also has this description. Um, so maybe my test name's bad, or maybe I shouldn't use this assertion type because it's very unclear. Uh, but anyway, I'm expecting even numbers to be even, and then this assertion, if this assertion fails, um, it's because four which I said should c come out as true uh, when you ask whether 4 is even. Uh, presumably it's come out as false and that, that's when we'll print this message. Um, let's get rid of this last test. So we, we end up now with two tests. One that checks an odd number for uh, not being even and one that checks an even number for being even. Um, 
it would be really interesting, by the way, for a, a, a code like this to use fuzz testing, which is also supported um, by Elm Test, but I'm not talking about in this video. Okay, so we've written a test suite. Um, we're pretty sure it's going to fail because we haven't written any code yet. Let's go out and test it. So let's run it. Uh, so as you can see, there's a compile error here. It can't find a module called can't even. Uh, and that's because we haven't written it yet. So let's write it. Uh, oops, put it in the wrong place. So we're going to put this in our source directory because this is our main source code for our real program, not our tests. Um, it, and all we're going to do is write a module called can't even, which exposes one function called is even. And is even is a function that takes in an int and returns true or false. And if you pass in x for now, let's just make that return true. So this code isn't correct yet, but it should compile. So save that and run it. So we'll run Elm test again. And indeed, the code did compile. And it printed out um, the names of the tests uh, and said that one of them passed. One of them passed. Sorry. Yeah, one of them passed and one of them failed. And it tells us. The failure that happened was that we expected three to be even, but um, uh, well, that sounds wrong. Let's let's have a look at that. I think I must have typed something wrong here. Yes, it should have been expected three to be odd. So let's change our message. So we found a bug in our test already. Run those tests again. Yeah, expected three to be odd, um, but our test failed because our code doesn't yet actually um, do the right thing. So let's edit our can't even module and make it actually do the right thing. So here's a non-beautiful but perfectly OK implementation of is even. So um, the remainder when you um, divide by 2 is 0. That means it's even. Let's run our tests. And all our tests pass. We've written our first unit test in Elm.